the objects are confirmed by five independent military radar installations, but identifying these objects won't be so easy. But at this point, you believe these are not aircraft collision lights. Oh, I know they're not. Planes have anti-collision lights on the wingtips, top and bottom of the fuselage, and vertical tail fin. From the cockpit view, they are green on the right and red on the left. The colors let other pilots know if the aircraft is approaching them or going away. I know it wasn't an aircraft. I know it wasn't a helicopter. I know it wasn't a balloon. I know it wasn't a star. I know it wasn't any test aircraft that I knew of at the time. Mm -hmm. And we had plenty of test aircraft at Edward. While it is possible that the light seen that night could have been top secret tests of a new craft, Sorrell's discounts that theory. They would have had to have notified me if they were going to fly anything in my control zone so that I could keep other aircraft away from it for no other reason, just for safety reasons. So even if this was a mysterious test, Chuck would have had to have known. Sorrells mentioned several secret programs at Edwards during this period. If it was at Edwards, it was most likely secret. We tested uh, all the new aircraft that come through Edward for testing. The SR-71, the Blackbird was in testing at that time. Uh, the B-70 was there at that time. Even if it was a highly classified aircraft, they definitely wouldn't have done it in that area without notifying the controllers on duty. It, it's not that they would tell the tower nothing. They would just tell the tower there was something going on. There's no way they would operate in that zone without Chuck knowing about it. The tower at Edwards and multiple other military radar sites confirm several objects are invading the airspace over Edwards Air Force Base. He's climbing. Much yeah. higher, much higher. Rising rapidly. It looks like it's right above. Right. So many unidentified contacts at the height of the Cold War when a Soviet missile attack was a very real fear. The decision to launch intercept aircraft would surely come soon. But on the tape, the authority to launch an investigatory flight seemed to be in the hands of an officer with a most unusual title. All of the bases had a UFO officer. Uh, you're a UFO officer. The team is reconstructing the incident above Edwards Air Force Base that occurred on October 7, 1965. Starting at 1.30 a.m., an object with strange pulsating lights is hovering near the base's rocket test site. And six smaller objects have joined it, three moving in formation to the south, and another three moving about the base freely. Five Southern California military radar stations capture the event. I'm getting some uh, reports for Edwards Tower, Victorville Tower, and uh, several radar sites about the UFOs. The team not only has the key eyewitness to the event, the base's senior air traffic controller, Chuck Soros, but now, for the first time on television, the previously classified complete audio tapes from that night's radio and telephone communications. I have another red light and uh, green light combination inside moving very rapidly. On that evening, after making repeated visual contact for over an hour, Sorrells gets on the phone to LADS, the Los Angeles Air Defense Sector. He discovers that they are now also in radar contact with the objects. Hey, so Lance here. Say, have you all had any uh, reports of unknown flying objects over there? The people at LADS got involved. They were in charge of the air defense of the area. They was getting radar paints on it, and I had a visual on it. Georgetown had a visual on it. There were several people on the ground on the Edwards that had visuals on it. Through the period of talking back and forth with LADS, we decided to uh, scramble an aircraft. At 2 a.m., Edwards alert pilot Captain Darrell Clark is notified of the incursion. He goes outside next to runway aircraft with a radio and binoculars to get a clear view. He makes visual contact. 
This is his voice when he gets on the radio and reports what he is seeing. I got a good look at it with the binoculars. It looked like a fairly low altitude. Two trained military men, one an air traffic controller, the other an experienced pilot. Both believe these are not typical aircraft. But these descriptions aren't enough for the people at LADS to take the next step. They will need to speak with a very specific officer to determine if they should launch an aircraft to intercept the objects. The lieutenant uh, is the UFO responsible officer in bed. Do you uh, want us to uh, shake this lieutenant out of the pad and uh, see if he wants to request uh, going up and looking? So right there, That's fascinating. they're calling for the UFO officer at the base. The lieutenant uh, is the UFO responsible officer in bed. I believe back in those days that every base had uh, a designated UFO officer. According to the Air Force, quote, investigators from the Foreign Technology Division may have been called unofficially UFO officer. But this is not a term that was ever used by the USAF to denote an official position. In my nine years in the Air Force, I never heard of a UFO officer. Are they looking for extraterrestrial flying saucers right. or just flying saucer any, or, or any object that was, that was unable to be identified? I mean, there's a difference there. I don't know that they were looking for any particular shape or size or anything like that. It was just anything that was out of the ordinary that would be called an unidentified flying object. At the onset of World War I, the U.S. Army formed a foreign data section to study the aviation capabilities and progress of the powers in Europe. By World War II, the division became the Technical Data Laboratory, based at Wright-Patterson Field. The group assessed captured enemy equipment and aircraft. After the war, the division merged into a scientific and technical intelligence group, T2 Intelligence, with a primary goal to, quote, ensure the prevention of strategic, tactical, or technological surprise from any source. As the Cold War escalated, their primary focus was Russia. However, in 1947, this division studied the emerging UFO phenomenon under Project Sign, and in 1952, this division created Project Blue Book for the continued study of UFOs. In 1961, the division was officially changed to the Foreign Technology Division. FTD personnel are not assigned to every base, only those which fall under their purview, according to the Air Force. Quote, it would not be unusual for FTD personnel to be at Edwards, given that Edwards functions as the test base for USAF aircraft and other aircraft, including foreign aircraft. This officer would be consulted whenever something unidentified was sighted, whether this was a suspected Soviet craft or any other object that was not immediately recognized by Edwards personnel. Object